Okay. So welcome to our third uh, community engagement session for Parkmore Hub. Um, this is our design session and we had a listening and visioning session before. So we're really excited to share with you guys um, all of the cumulative opinions and comments we have gathered and included during our design process and showing uh, tonight the design product of where we are based on your comments and feedback. So really appreciate all of the previous feedback and dialogues and um, sharing your opinions as well. Uh, my name is Macy Leung. I'm a senior project manager with Allied Housing Abode Services. Um, with me, I have uh, Andrew Barnes with the County of Santa Clara and Rod and Paul from HKIT Architect, and we'll do uh, introductions shortly. Next slide. Uh, tonight is our third design session focus um, engagement meeting. You should all have this flyer ready, um, and we're really excited to have you back tonight. Next slide. So tonight, the um, overall agenda is gonna be a quick welcome and introduction, um, a recap of the project, site history and mission of the hub by the County of Santa Clara, Office of Supporting Housing, a close partner to this project. Uh, a quick overview of the project overview and team with Allied Housing Abode Services, um, our current community engagement summary to date. And the heart of the presentation tonight um, is by HKIT, which is sharing the design and architectural progress. And then a design, um, the engagement sessions design objective. We're gonna solicit some feedback specifically on different design elements um, via Jamboard that HKIT will share. And then in the end, we'll do a recap and summary um, of today's session. And this is a continuation of previous two engagement and a continuing dialogue in the future. So there are a lot more opportunities um, to engage with the project team. Next slide. So again, a thank you for all of the supervisor, um, Cindy Chavez and uh, Susan Allenberg's office. Uh, Council Member Deb Davis and county staff, um, especially Santa Clara Office of Supportive Housing and City of San Jose and all of the organizations um, that have been contributing to uh, the comments and feedback so far and all the neighborhood association and the Chamber of Commerce. Next slide. Um, these are our current engagements to date and this is a recap of previous summer and presentation. Um, we have reached out to all of the uh, neighbors around the neighborhood, as well as businesses shown on this diagram, as well as offsite. So we really have a rich and robust dialogue so far with individual meetings, with individual neighbors and businesses who share with us their opinion, as well as previous engagement, um, getting all the feedback from the youth, from uh, folks who have attended in previous engagement meeting as well. So thank you for that. Next slide. So currently we are in our third engagement, um, which is tonight. And then after that, we will have ongoing one-on-one -on -one Zoom and phone call meetings um, and dialogues with city, county focus groups, uh, neighbors, et cetera, and ongoing meetings uh, specifically focused on the hub design with youth and also um, staff and partners uh, related to the hub. So we have completed the listening session and the visioning session. So now we're excited to be in the design session as a third um, meeting. Next slide. With that said, I'd like to turn this over to Andrew Barnes with the county to share um, a little bit about the background and a recap of developer selection process and housing opportunity. Andrew. Thank you, Macy. Hi there. It is great to see some familiar faces from previous meetings and some some new faces as well. Uh, we've gone over some of this in the past, so I'm going to be brief about it, but for the benefit of anyone who's joining us for the first time, uh, quick background on the site. This is a site that the county acquired in 2017. On this site currently are four vacant office buildings, which are scheduled to be demolished. Uh, the analysis that we've done on this site shows it's quite well positioned for the intended use of the hub and as a residential site. Uh, the developer selection process for this was a competitive process through proposals that were received by the Office of Supportive Housing, recommendations were made, and the 
County Board of Supervisors approved the recommendation to select Allied Housing uh, earlier this year, May 2021 20, uh, of this year. Uh, as far as a housing opportunity on this site, uh, it is intended to be uh, affordable housing. It will be affordable housing. It'll have a focus on transitional age youth with complementary uh, populations. We're targeting approximately 81 units for the site and the affordability levels and the unit mixes, bedroom sizes are currently being evaluated and um, determined. What is really important about the site is not only the, uh, I'm sorry, next slide, please. What's really important about this slide is not only the housing opportunity, but also the opportunity it represents for the hub and the relocation of the hub from its current site to here. A little bit about the hub. Uh, the hub, which is intended to go on the ground floor, it's a youth-led and organized community. It's dedicated support to supporting current and foster youth ages 15 to 24. The hub is intended to be a, a space in a welcoming center where foster youth can feel a sense of belonging and environment. And are offered a variety of services by their peers and other caring community members. So what is it? So what it's intended to be, and it will be a one-stop one center providing an array of services for transitional age youth to ensure self-sufficiency and success past the age of 25, safe, warm, and inviting. It's a place for youth to gather and form their own community. Services are trauma-informed and culturally responsive, and programs are informed and designed for youth. And that is the makeup of the hub and then the opportunity we have for housing on top of it. Thank you, Macy. Back to you. Thank you, Andrew. Next slide, please. Next slide. So a quick preliminary overview of the project, and Andrew touched a little bit on that, is we have a new hub on the ground floor, really the focus of this project, specifically dedicated to you, um, and also working in partnership with the county has been wonderful on this hub, and also up to 81 units on top of the hub. It's a new construction and a tax credit finance project, and it will be extremely sustainable, all electric building. Um, county will be demolishing the existing vacant structure. And the hub, as Andrew mentioned, is gonna be for youth between 15 to 24 years old and affordable housing on top. It will have surface parking and car stacker, and it's gonna be a wood frame with podium. Next slide. Our quick overview of the project schedule, um, community engagement had already begun uh, Q2 in 2021, so a few months ago. We're in the schematic design entitlement process. Um, we're expecting to move forward with the design development and construction document and permitting in Q4, through Q4 of 2022. Construction is expecting to start in 2023 and complete end of 2024, and lease up will begin before construction completion in 2024. Next slide. Uh, so a quick overview of the planning and design is going to be um, led by HKIT's Rod and Paul. So I'll turn this over to Rod and Paul. Great, thank you, Macy. Uh, we have the next slide, please. Um, so I'm Paul McElwee, principal with HKIT Architects. I'm here tonight with Rod Henley. Uh, also, Lisa Lau and Akshata working on the project, um, and I also see that Ariella has joined us as well. She's going to be working with us on the hub. Um, we are really excited to be part of this project, and uh, thank you everyone for your time tonight. Uh, we really uh, looking forward to sharing our design vision with you um, later in the uh, in the presentation. And um, at the moment, I just wanted to go over the site, and I'm sorry this is redundant for those of you who have been in prior meetings and. Um, as uh, Andrew mentioned, we really want to make sure we've uh, gotten everyone oriented toward the site. Um, for those of you who are new to the, the process, um, this is an overview of the site. As Andrew mentioned earlier, we've got some commercial buildings um, that are part of this triangular site. Um, we're right next to the freeway, Highway 280, um, although we're actually up um, in elevation about 30 feet above the surface of the freeway, um, right next to the overpass at Meridian. Uh, also, to point out, um, you know, nearby amenities, we've got the shopping center across the street. Uh, there's a pedestrian bridge you'll see off to the left that crosses the freeway. 
uh, provides access to the neighborhood and uh, to the college to the southwest. And then to the uh, other side, we've got the, uh, the light rail, the VTA coming through with the station um, not far from the site. Uh, can we get the next slide, please? Uh, these are some photographs. We've taken the time to, we've, we've been out to the site and uh, walked around the neighborhood and uh, done a lot of analysis and really um, focused on the primary frontages, Parkmore, Meridian, and Highway 280. Uh, you can see on the far right, some of the, the photographs I mentioned earlier, how there's a quite a steep difference in height between the freeway and the site and uh, a thick grove of trees as well that provides us some shielding from that side. So that's really a a useful factor. Uh, photograph number six in the upper right you'll see is a, a view along the frontage of Parkmore. This is our primary uh, frontage of the building uh, towards the Parkmore uh, street. Can we go to the next slide, please. Um, as uh, uh, Macy alluded to, there's been a lot of outreach for this project, a lot of discussions happening with different groups, and uh, we've also taken the time to really study the neighborhood at large and look at the connections and the amenities that are available for the um, the residents and the users of the hub. Uh, so this diagram illustrates uh, a walking distance in terms of these dash circles and the proximity to a lot of amenities, parks, schools, shopping, um, uh, healthcare facilities, and um, really well served by transit as well. Um, that we've got uh, a site that's kind of rare in this neighborhood and that we've actually got a nearby VTA stops, two, two nearby VTA stops within a short walk of the site in addition to a number of bus lines. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this slide is a, is a diagram really just to illustrate that the site itself, uh, this triangular shape is it's um, an overall area, but really only a portion is actually buildable. So what you'll see in green is the area of the site that is buildable. In other words, the area that's in brown has actually got a number of large uh, storm drains and other um, civic infrastructure that we can't build on top of. So this area that's in brown on this diagram is really excluded from development. Um, this diagram also illustrates that there's a tenant on the site currently. There's a, a, a cell phone uh, tower facility, which consists of a, of a, a, a tower antenna and, uh, that needs to remain. We've also got a tree on the site. It's a large existing tree. Um, an oak tree that we really like to preserve and make that a feature as we uh, develop the building. So you can see the area that we've got left to develop is really against Meridian and closer to the freeway. And with the program of the hub um, that we've been discussing, we're targeting about 17,000 square feet of space. And that's really looking at all the program uh, of the hub. And that's that circle there represents roughly the area of the hub. Um, so with that, I just wanted to uh, turn it over to Rod to talk a little bit about our design and uh, take it from there. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Uh, next slide, please. So um, the, uh, we just wanted to summarize a little bit about what we've heard before. Um, this is the third uh, session, which um, and we've had two very helpful sessions before. On August 25th, in the first session, um, you can see the boards above illustrate the various comments that received and the, and the really short form bullet points uh, uh, that summarize that is an emphasis on pedestrian movement, experience and safety. Uh, the positive impact of art, people very enthusiastic about art inclusion in the project. Uh, sustainability is very important. Um, and it is for all of our projects. Um, we want to create a home-like feel for the hub, but also for the housing. Uh, lush landscaping and building design, as mentioned, of warm colors and making it welcoming and protecting from the freeway noise was another issue that was raised. Next, please. In the second session, um, which was September 21, um, we, uh, in the boards illustrate above, uh, we talked about specific locations for the art and uh, there was preferences for the murals at the corner and at the hub areas. Um, there was a positive response to the L-shaped massing that we showed in this, uh, in this scheme and we'll of course be showing that again. Uh, talked about landscaping on the terrace at the hub. We got input on specific landscaping elements like kinds of plants and uh, benches, et cetera. And there were good 
thoughts and some praise for the fact that the process uh, has been open and sharing and lots of uh, work to reach out to people and make sure that we get their input. We also wanted to bring up a few examples of youth input because we've been having separate meetings with the, uh, the youth uh, uh, in addition to the community meetings. And uh, the youth have emphasized that the hub should be safe and welcoming, that there needs to be a strong connection between the inside and outside. And they asked for flexible outdoor space with small and large group gathering areas. So um, we've been seeking input from a, a variety of constituents. Uh, next, please. Um, this is the final massing. Um, the view on the left shows Parkmore in the front, and the highway behind. The view on the right is the view uh, from uh, Parkmore showing the building pushed closer to the edges along Meridian and along the freeway in order to preserve as much space as possible be, um, closer to Parkmore. Next, please. Um, but to uh, describe some of the reasons why we did this, um, and these include uh, input from you. And we heard that it was uh, reducing noise from the freeway was important, and we definitely um, support that. And it also, uh, so by pushing the building up against Meridian and in the freeway, we're able to uh, make the orange space, which is the indication of the hub, and the light blue space on the first floor is the support spaces for the housing. And on the far right, you can see the uh, cell phone tower, which, which is to remain. So by pushing the building up against those two edges, we're able to make the hub space and the outdoor space uh, in front of the hub uh, quieter and also more protected from the soot that uh, it comes off the freeway. Next, please. Secondly, uh, you mentioned, uh, and we uh, totally agree that uh, pedestrian safety is important. So uh, one of the ways we're uh, doing that is to uh, make sure that we make the hub entry very close to the crosswalk so people can easily cross over and get into our building. Our vehicular access is pulled away from the corner. And next slide um, shows that the city has proposed pedestrian improvements on this intersection, which we uh, which we are in discussions with and uh, hoping to uh, and, and planning to be involved in those improvements. You can see uh, first that there are three crosswalks, but they're proposing a fourth. So one can get to all four corners. Uh, secondly, the orange color um, is what's called a bulb out. And you, you probably are aware that right now the there's a big turning radius on the upper two corners and then there's an eye you have to cross a, a drive and then there's an island and you stand on the island and then you cross the street well basically they'll be filling in that space so that the uh, pedestrian area is much uh, larger and the walking distance between the two uh, from one corner to the other is much less so that's another improvement that's planned they also proposing islands uh, between our medians, between the uh, traffic lanes, so that the street, instead of being one gigantic crossing area, is divided into two, um, and uh, bike lanes as well that uh, are proposed along the edge of our street. So all of these will make a safer pedestrian environment and support our uh, hub entry. Next, please. Um, we want to make sure it's a welcoming building, and by pushing the bigger part of the building back, we can have a lower mass um, in the front. And, and, and so it's lower stepping up to higher. We think this makes a more welcoming um, uh, presence. Next. Um, and as Paul mentioned, uh, by also by pushing the building away from the street, we can preserve the existing tree, which is the, uh, the live oak pictured on the right. Next, please. So now what we wanted to do was to show you more specifics about uh, what we're proposing. That is, what does this building look like um, in its actual um, treatment? Um, this is the view from the corner of Meridian and Parkmore, Park, uh, Parkmore being to the right, and Meridian is uh, going over the highway on the left side. And um, one thing is, even though the building is four stories, we reduce the height on the corner down to 
uh, sorry, the building is five stories, four, four stories of housing over the hub, but we reduced the corner to four stories because we thought that made a little lower mass and a little friendlier presence on this corner. Secondly, you can see how the idea of incorporating the uh, murals um, into the uh, corner element and also along the base along, along the hub is, uh, is incorporated. One thing I want to mention, what we're showing on the mural is not the actual mural. We'll, this is more of a placeholder for a future, uh, future uh, artist to, um, to provide their magic. Uh, we provided some warm materials, like the uh, base of the hub has a wood-like material and on the corner as well. Um, so uh, try, trying to create the uh, warm colors, uh, you can see that the corner color is a kind of taupe color and an off-white in the background. And, uh, and then we finally use a, a sage green kind of accent color, which we think, we, we think of that green as um, the sort of California green, the kind of um, the kind of green that you see in the types of trees that we have in our climate. Uh, I'm going to walk you around in a counterclockwise, counterclockwise direction around the building. So we're going to go to the right now. So as we uh, uh, zoom, as we zoomed into the building now, and now we're on the walkway leading you up to the hub. And so uh, the uh, corner mass you can see now is in the foreground uh, above and to the, to the left. Um, here's the wood, wood uh, finished material for the hub entry that highlights the entry and creates a sense of warmth. Um, the arc you can see, and then you can also see that the um, terrace is uh, above the hub is a roof terrace that is the private space for the housing. And uh, in the far uh, background, you can see the presence of the housing elevator, which I'll show you in the next drawing a little bit more. Next, please. So as we keep moving to the right, um, now you can see the housing entry is on the right side. <clears throat> and uh, above the housing entry is uh, that the green mass we're showing is uh, the elevator and a stair from the housing. And in the middle is a housing lobby from that housing elevator. It's an elevator lobby. So when you're waiting, uh, you would be in that middle uh, glass bay that's projecting out. You can look out toward the terrace and toward the, uh, toward the hub ground space. And what we're showing on the face of that glass is a, is a metal screen. Um, you can see through that metal from the inside. And from the outside, it can be a decorative screen of some, again, this is a placeholder. It's not exactly the shapes, but the idea is that it can be decorative. It can create a pattern that's interesting and specific to the site, to the building, and, and, and become a kind of art piece in itself. Next, please. <clears throat> then when we move to the right a little bit more, here you can see the housing entry um, from the parking area. Um, you can see the terrace above, the artwork of the hub on that lower level, and the uh, elevator lobby with its special feature, um, and then, of course, the windows of the housing. Next, please. From the highway, um, you don't see a whole lot, and that's <clears throat> sort of the point of this drawing. Um, we, we did some fairly careful modeling to check the uh, heights of the trees and the height of the building and the view from the highway. And of course you're zooming by at 65 miles an hour anyway, um, but uh, you do glimpse the building through the trees. And um, in some ways, uh, well, I, I would actually say it's good that you can't see much of the building from the freeway because what that means is those trees also prevent residents from seeing the freeway. Instead, they're, they're seeing the trees and that redwood screen will be a a pleasant screen for, uh, for the residents. Next, please. Um, and then finally, this final view is from the corner, um, close to Parkmore, but you're on Meridian, close to Parkmore. Um, and uh, again, you can see the idea, these uh, warmer wood finished materials, the uh, sage green, um, the taupe color, and uh, a pattern of the, uh, the windows, um, which are, um, we have some breaks in that mass to, to make it not so, uh, to make it uh, human scaled. We have a lot of windows on the base because that's where the hub is gonna be. And uh, that allows them to be uh, uh, keeping an eye and making an active sense of the base. 
Um, and uh, that's pretty much the tour of the building. So next, please. Uh, next. So now what we're going to now move into is into our uh, input session. Our jam boards will be showing you. Um, so in this session, we'll be asking you to uh, contribute your thoughts, um, do you, you know, add your thoughts to this. Um, we will be asking for your ideas on design, colors, signage, lighting, and the type of art. And we'll be doing that through Jamboards. Next, please. Um, so this is a virtual whiteboard. Um, and next, please. Um, let's see, do we have the link for the jam boards? Yes, uh, I just so, put it in the chat. Uh, Macy, okay, Macy will be posting the link for the jam boards in the chat. But if you would, uh, two ways to express your thoughts. One is you can just say it in uh, unmute and say it in uh, this set part. Are we using the chat? Uh, I think we're using the chat, aren't we? So you can. No, no, we actually we we're using voices. So you can um, express your thought and we'll type it down and put it in. Or secondly, you see the command on the left. When you, when you go to the link, you see that uh, menu bar on the left and there's one of, one of the menu bars says um, yellow sticky, sticky note. And you just hit on that sticky note and you will get this um, yeah, step two, and then you will see the, uh, you'll get a sticky note, then you can type whatever you want in, and then you hit save, and it will show up on our Jamboard. So you can do it yourself, or, you, or we can do it for you. So next, please. Uh, let's go to the Jamboard then, while she's pulling that up. I put the link in the chat box. Um, so feel free to go into the link and record your message and comments, or you can just unmute yourself and tell Rod what you think as he goes, and he'll record it. Okay. All right. Um, how are we doing, Oxter? Can you pull up the Jamboard? Okay, great. Uh, somebody just accidentally deleted the first slide. If you did that, could you just undo your changes so we can have the math <laughs> back up? What was the first one? Uh, We're asking people to tell us where their name and where they're from. Okay, all right, I see, I see. Looks like somebody, all right. yeah, someone well, we deleted could... it. Yeah, that's okay if we uh, if it's been deleted. So the the first one we were just asking if uh, people to introduce themselves by name and uh, neighborhood or location. Um, so if you'd like to add it you know, with a sticky, you can do so. Uh, what we had before was a map of the uh, of the site. Um, or if you would like to unmute and tell us, and we can do it. So uh, anybody like to introduce, uh, here's, that's great. Blake from San Jose City College has yeah, put his up. Anybody else? It's always good to hear from, to know where people are from and that sort of thing. I'm Karen Armour and I'm from First Congregational Church of San Jose. Great, thank you, Karen. Anybody else? And Arbert, great. I'm going to this the neighborhood nearby. Thank you. What if we put it on the wrong page? <laughs> How do we move it? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, all these little tricky, tricky things. Okay. Until you else? can just um, shout out and then Akshata can just type it in for you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I'm Tony Miranda, uh, representing San Jose Chamber of Commerce. Oh, great. Thank you. Got Jane and Lewis from Allied Housing has joined us. Lewis is our CEO of Allied on the Road. Anybody else? <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Well, let's move on, and you can always add uh, later. I'm sure you can. Um, so, all right. So the first um, thing is we thought we'd just ask for if there are any general comments, um, questions on the design that we showed, um, uh, just kind of any, uh, any observations at all that you would uh, like to make and we should record. Well, uh, don't everybody, don't everybody <laughs> jump in at once. Go. Yeah. Uh, well, this is Jane, and I, uh, I just, I just think it's nice. I, it feels like you brought in a lot of the elements we talked about, or I was in the August visioning session. Um. Yeah, um. I like the color color scheme. You know the the welcoming, you know, that you brought in the ideas for welcoming and the, um, and the landscaping. And um, I like that it's not super high. I was, I was thinking 81 units was going to mean a tall, um, another tall um, housing structure. Um, so I, I like the height and I like the, uh, the idea of the indoor and outdoor spaces blending and and the youth's idea for for that and the garden beds and the yeah I, I like a lot of the elements that you um, proposed great thank you very much that's a nice comment yeah um in terms of uh, it's a tight site and uh but we did work to keep the building as low as possible um Four stories over one is um, the same as you have for many buildings along Meridian, along San Carlos, and and even along Parkmar further uh, east of our site. Uh, so it's not out of scale, but still we we did want to keep it low, and and we did work to drop the corner height in particular because that's the part that's closest to uh, every everybody's interaction. So thank you. Anybody else? Uh, this is Karen. I think one thing that strikes me is the fact that, yes, it's a very small space, but it fits the space perfectly. You know, it doesn't make it feel like it's been that you've squeezed in every little space that you can use. It's been very well thought out how to get the most out of that space. Thank you. Uh, we, we always like to hear comments like perfectly. Um, so if any of the rest of you would like to add that, reinforce that, we'd be, we'd be, we'd like to hear that. But anyway, thank you very much. That's very nice. I had a question uh, actually. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Well, uh, so this is Blake from city. The love the rendering. Like it's, it's, uh, you know, definitely I, I hear the designs. I saw the layouts from before the masking and everything, but the, the rendering of it definitely gets, um, gets the point across and, and, and seeing it in situ, I think, you know, anyone would be proud to, to, to live there. Um, it looks very cool. And I, I really like that idea that it doesn't look so sterile or like, you know, what people traditionally think of as public housing and, and that sort of thing. It, it looks like somewhere you want to live. Let's put it that way. Like I'd pay good money for a condo in this place, right? Like, you know, I'd be <laughs> very, very happy to live there. That's great. The question I had mm -hmm. um, in addition mm. um, is that of, uh, for for if someone was to pick up youth, um, so for instance they they were getting um, assistance like getting to and from a location, putting their bicycles, um, having their own vehicles. I guess the question there is about uh, transportation and uh, mm -hmm. where could someone catch a ride share? Where could someone get dropped off? Um, could we see that again if somebody is able to to do that? Yeah. So, so our parking is uh, closer to the uh, west end of the site. Um, actually, you can see you can see the in this drawing, uh, and maybe actually, could you move the uh, stickies uh, out of the drawing? Or yeah, thank you. So you can see on the uh, the right side, you can see a, a drive, a curb cut. Uh, maybe actually, you can yeah, right there. That's uh, that's where the um, 
drive and parking um, essentially starts. So it's closer on the west side of the site. And the reason for that is to leave that green area with the two trees and the main tree, the big tree, um, um, on in, uh, not obviously to lose all that space by having parking there, but by uh, preserving that green space. Um, so it's very close to the housing entry, not as close to the hub entry in terms of things like uh, lift or a, a, a drop off. There will be a drop off there and from where the red circle is. And where the red circle is, you can, of course, uh, we have a pretty convenient walk to get to the hub entry. Um, the other thing though, I think is when it comes down to rideshare, rideshare is gonna uh, park right in front of the build, right in front of the hub entry, um, no matter, uh, you know, because that's the uh, shortest connection. So, um, but we can also actually uh, look into the possibility of white stripe cur uh, uh, a white curb zone. Um, so we will we will ask about that. Uh, but appreciate uh, you know the, the concern is important. Uh, appreciate that input and um, and thank you for the comment. We always as a firm um, never uh, you know our our approach to buildings is you know, affordable housing is shouldn't and we don't think it does look affordable it doesn't look cheap that is it should look competitive it should look as good as any market rate building and uh, we think a lot of times it, it it does do that uh let's see we're having other comments uh blake tony love tony love the activated roof over the hub will there be room on building roof for pv and or solar thermal Yes, we anticipate having most likely PV um, to uh, supplement our energy and to, uh, and to make the building more sustainable and reduce our energy loads, particularly for water heating, um, which uh, we're planning to have an all electric building and water heating in that case will be electric. And so using PV will, uh, will help to address that. Uh, let's see, Blake, we already heard, James, nice. Uh, yeah, Rod, Rod, there still may be some solar thermal credits from uh, the utilities that will help. So it's actually solar, you're using PV on the solar thermal side, which is these kinds of buildings are perfect for that kind of hot water system. Thank you, yeah. Tony. I will look into that too. That's great. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll be um, aiming to maximize um, our renewable energy uh, input. Uh, like that, you know, the, uh, let's see, Robert's comment, uh, very nice and well thought through, and specifically like the massing of the building and the way they break so that they don't all look like one big concrete block. Colors are nice as well. Thank you. Okay, any other, any other uh, general comments? Um, Michelle has a comment um, or question, and I responded. Um, she asked if the roof, how will the roof be utilized? For example, a green roof, a roof deck or terrace. Um, and that was piggybacking really on Tony's question as well. So glad you answered that. Mm. Thank you, Michelle, it's good to see you. Yeah, so Michelle, we have uh, the lower roof, uh, which is where the, uh, above the hub, that one is a complete occupied terrace roof that will have a lot of green plants, trees, et cetera. The roof of the building itself on top, uh, we do not in, uh, we would not be intending to make it occupied, that is, as a, a roof deck, um, principally because um, it does, um, it does have issues like, um, well, uh, additional cost. We have to take elevators and stairs up to the top to make it accessible. We can only, I code have a small amount of occupied area um, in the upper levels. It's only about 750 square feet, like 30 by 25 is all we can have. And so to take it up there to get that small area is not a, a sort of good um, uh, return on our investment. So uh, we will be using the roof for the renewables though. And that's something that, um, that that's definitely an advantageous. So. Okay. Um, last, I don't want to keep you all too long, but yeah. Go on. I was going to say last last question on this one as well. The um, 
we around city and in, in other uh, kind of alcoves nearby, um, I noticed that there are um, lots of areas where unhoused folks are looking to um, set up. And I know that some shop owners have had some issues with that. And um, we sometimes also get lodging here at city. Um, are there areas like little pockets of, of places or anything in the, in the design that has, because right now on the front edge, it seems fairly straight sight lines and um, the front has a, an area that's walked frequently. I can see that there. And then also on that small picture, it's that, but are there any areas that are, um, I guess the, the, the thought is, um, you know, if you all would end up with an encampment somewhere uh, nearby in the back and, you know, get, don't get me wrong, like, you know, we actually do try to find housing for our students and working with Bill Wilson, mm -hmm. it's really awesome in terms of that. But um, we, we also found that to be um, challenging sometimes. Are there, is, is there another view of the back of the building? Because I think I'm seeing the, this is the yeah, front. Or... This is the front. Yeah, we didn't, uh, well, we showed that view from the highway, but you obviously can't see what the, uh, much of the back. So we have about a 10 foot space, 10 to 12 foot space between the fence, uh, which will be uh, uh, separating the highway land from our land. So we'll have a fence on our property line and we have our building about 10 to 12 feet away from that property line. That area, we will also have a fence with gate at along Meridian. So closing it off from there and closing it off on the west side as well. So the two ends of the building, uh, in other words, that area behind the building, which is on our property it's, will be hopefully secured um, and uh, will be secured in that way. And um, uh, of course the land on the, beyond our property on the freeway, we can't do anything about that part, but uh, we do intend, we, we don't want, in other words, hidden uh, corners and areas that are um, attractive nuisances. So we will, we are aware of, of uh, concerns like that. Perfect. Um, no, that was a question about, yeah, thanks. Question about parking count. We're at about uh, 75 to 76 spaces on the site. Uh, the car stackers where will be uh, underneath the building on the far west end of the building. So there's uh, about half on-site parking and half uh, structured parking that is parking within the building. Um, so, okay. All right. Um, if there are no other comments, hearing none, we'll move on. And again, you can put another comment, uh, post it. So the, this one, um, this is a little game show choice here. Um, we have uh, two uh, options here that we're showing. Number one um, is the, uh, so we're, we're calling this the kind of housing tower. There's the uh, 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 elevator stair and the elevator lobby with the glass and the metal screen in, the, in between. So symbolically, it's important. That is, you enter the lobby below, which is covered by the, the uh, wood material. Then you take the elevator up, get off, and you step out into that glass lobby. You look through that metal screen, you see out, and then you go to your room. So, so it's a, it's a, and then to the left of it, that bottom portion, which creates a kind of L, is the community room. So that's where um, you, we have community functions and birthday parties and, and uh, gatherings, et cetera. So that L shape, in other words, is important to the meaning of the building. And we therefore wanted to highlight it with both the metal screen and secondly, potentially the color. So we've been showing the sage green, uh, but we, another option would be to use uh, a gray color, which oh, a very warm gray, you see it's a very brown gray um, that we have elsewhere in the building. And we wanted to see if, uh, if you have preferences. So you want to put a sticky up there or you can put it in the chat and just say you want to go one or two. Um, we will then record these and, uh, uh, and then use your advice. Um, so number one is running, running, running hot so far. Lots of ones. Um, 
Number one is running hot so far. Gray is looking like uh, not so popular. One, one, Karen to every Karen says one. Michelle says one. And I don't know if you've got that, uh, Akshita, that uh, two people have chatted to put in at, at once. Okay, one more. Yeah. Nong has voted one. Give you another minute. And um, yeah, you can just put it in the chat. You can type it in yourself or let us know if you want to just say it. Okay, well, uh, we'll do a few more seconds, otherwise we'll move on here. Yeah, um, sorry, I don't know how to reach the sticky notes, but I, I like the green, I like number one. Okay, all right, great, we'll add that in. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, next. Um, so uh, this is uh, some options for signage. We thought we'd see if you have any preferences and you can also say you don't have preferences. Um, number one is a 1101 you see as a list sign and a very clever way to highlight the, uh, the address and, and hopefully we'll have a, a very auspicious address. Um, that's one. Uh, number two is a um, little bit hard to see, but the uh, there's an emboss uh, name on the right side in the concrete, or number four is somewhat similar, um, where it's uh, into the building wall. It's a kind of embossing or on the wall treatment, and that one also shows a uh, name on the uh, canopy overhead. So that has two two uh, two signage types. And number three is on the glass of the entry and it's shown uh, from the outside on the top view. It's a little hard to see and on the inside from the bottom view. Um, so we just wanted to see if there were any uh, preferences that you would like to uh, see included. Um, so same thing, you can either speak it, uh, chat it, or uh, put it on yourself. This is Tony personally, I like the uh the wayfinding ID for a building a little bit higher so that trucks and things don't block view of it if you're trying to drive by and see it. Mm -hmm. uh, also like to see sometimes if there's an option to do indirect backlit on the letters and numbers so that at nighttime it punches out a little bit. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's put that down as a note. Backlit is uh, backlit or, or lit in some way is good. It says number four and Nang says number one as well in the chat. It's Karen. And Michelle says number four also. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the number uh, that it's a very clever sign, number one, with the uh, the uh, graphic. Uh, uh, simplification of the 1101. Very nice. But we'll have to get a dress that only has ones or zeros. So, okay, anybody else? A few more thoughts? I have a question. Um, this is, mm. this is Michelle A. Jones. In regards mm -hmm. to number four, mm -hmm. would I just have a suggestion. If you consider number four, could the letters, I'm sorry, the numbers, could the numbers somehow pop? So hmm. what I mean is instead yep. of being right. um, be seated into the, the wall there or the building, if they can um, maybe be a little 
little bit more of a block style so that they, right. they just pop. Right, right. Uh, the answer, of course, is yes. Yes, we can do uh, hybrid versions of any of these. So yes, that they could be projecting. They could be, as Tony mentioned, backlit. Um, and uh, and it could be a, a, a number address on the wall and a name on the top, which is what 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 they're showing now. And, and it's always great if we're able to, uh, you know, it'd be it'd be great to have a, a great name for the building as well. Okay, we had a comment about asking the hub use for comments. Absolutely, we will be doing that. We will be having separate meetings with the hub use and. Uh, I don't know, are there any hub use here tonight? Um, maybe you can let us know if you are. And if so, we welcome you. And uh, we'll say that we're looking forward to showing these materials to you and get your input as well. But you're welcome also to add your comments tonight um, as well as in that future hub meeting. So but let us know if you're here. Meanwhile, uh, any other last comments on this? Uh, we will go on. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, lighting, um, there are four, uh, there are post lights that we'll be putting out on the site to light parking, light the, uh, you know, the outdoor areas. Um, we're showing four post light styles. Um, we just thought we'd uh, check to see if you have any thoughts on these. I think they're all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, one thing about outdoor lighting is that we have a dark sky ordinance. That is, you don't want any lighting to be cast up, um, but all of it to go down onto the surfaces that want to be lit so that you reduce uh, outdoor light pollution, they call it. So all of these are what are called full cutoff fixtures. That is, they, they cast down. Uh, for example, the, the old style acorn fixture is, is not a good cutoff fixture because it, 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 it would cast light up. So, um, so anyway, of these four, any preferences? Uh, go ahead again and uh, indicate preferences and then we'll go on to our last category. Hello, this is uh, Robert. Please. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is there a difference in maintenance between the lights? Because uh, uh, usually when the lights go down, then, you know, we're, we're kind of stuck. And, and if it's difficult to maintain them, then the, the, the time for their repair would take even longer. So um, I would say, which one is easier to repair? Yeah. So all, all four of these are LED fixtures. And I think... The answer is there's not a difference between these four in terms of maintenance requirements. The, the, the lighting itself would be the same, that is LED. And as you probably know, LED fixtures have a very long lifetime uh, for replacement. Um, but um, I, think, uh, I think all four of these are equally maintainable. Good concern though, it's always, maintenance is always an important issue. I had a question. I don't know if it's just a perspective or maybe it's rendering. It might understand. So uh, I'm looking at fixture one has a set height. Is number three that much taller uh, than the number one? Like, is, oh, is it see, with the with the red block and the yellow right. block? No, no. The fixtures uh, assume that. Yeah, that's just a uh, uh, an example on a site. But the actual fixtures would be on the same. Assume that they're they're the same height, which same height. I'm sure they would be. Yeah. Very keen observation, though. I can see we're not flipping anything by this group. <laughs> okay. Any uh, any preferences for shapes? Only got one that I see so far on number four. We got one for number two. Let's put one for number two. Uh, 
two for number four. Interesting. Where is it? Set three, number four again. Set three for number four then. Okay, number one and number two, nice looking. Which shapes is more bird proof? Bird proof, interesting. Huh. Monica um, says number one from the Wilson Center and Brianna, um, hi Brianna, have you says number one in the chat box. Okay. Uh, you can see uh, one and two are both have a rounded top. Uh, two is obviously more of a rounded top. Um, I think the goal was not to have a big flat surface, uh, which probably four has the biggest flat surface and would probably be more inviting for birds to sit on top. So. Okay, it looks like we've Jane got says five, number one as well. Five for number one and four number two, four is second with three and two is third with number with two. All right, a few more seconds and then we'll move on. I'm glad we we didn't, uh, today's Wednesday, right? Yeah, I'm glad we didn't have this community meeting tomorrow night uh, and can be competing with the Giants. Uh, we probably would not have as many people participating tomorrow night. Okay, next please. Okay, um, so this is the, uh, the last of the input boards, uh, the types of art we're showing. Um, uh, number one is the decorative metal screen idea. You can, and what this is, is uh, you can take metal and with computer programming, they can uh, punch the metal, they can make it perforated. Um, and the perforations allow you to see through it and the variation on the perforation spacing allows it to become a pattern. You can spell words, you can have a face, you can do all sorts of very cool things. So number one is, uh, in other words, about using the uh, perforated metal, which uh, we're showing something on the uh, elevator uh, uh, lobby, for example. Number two and three are different kinds of murals, um, but they're uh, both murals uh, um, in, in, um, in, obviously we're showing a designated space. Number four is uh, is kind of a mural, but they're, instead of painting the wall, these are uh, the uh, butterflies are elements that were uh, made and um, then attached to the wall, um, and they were ceramic. And so they're uh, it, it's not painting the entire wall, but it's making these uh, specific elements that get attached on. And finally, number five, um, it's a little hard to see in this photograph, um, but the elements on the wall to the left are movable. So they're on um, uh, wires and on the uh, top part um, is uh, cloud shapes. Then in the middle are three boats and the boats are historic boats of, of the Oakland Basin. This is in Oakland. And the bottom portion are the waves of the bay. So, uh, and then they're suspended on wires so that when, they, uh, when the wind blows, they would actually move. Uh, so a movable piece is is the uh, is the uh, fifth option. So um, if you want to let us know uh, which, uh, or you know, you can you can vote for all, vote for three, vote for as many as you want. In other words, uh, and uh, then we'll uh, that's be uh, kind of good to know. Hey, Rod, to clarify, is this artwork just for kind of the resident side and you're going to seek input from the youth groups for the yeah. area? That's a good question. Yeah. I was just going to add to Rod is any art that we put on the building, we are intending to include the youth throughout the whole process by creating art, creating the design, and we're going to have the artist to help facilitate and working with the hub on all the art that gets put on the building. So excellent question. Yeah. And Rod, do you want to share a little bit about um, working with the youth for number five? Sure, that's a great story. So um, the uh, number five is our building in Brooklyn Basin. And um, in that case, uh, we worked with a, uh, a really wonderful art 
um, youth uh, group called Civic Design Studio. And what they do is they uh, collaborate with the, in this case, the youth of Oakland high schools um, to, um, to design the art to, and even in this case, fabricate the art. So um, their whole goal is to get students involved in making art and learning um, uh, applicable skills such as computer fabrication. So they program, they do the programming, they, they, they cut the pieces um, and uh, they, they learn that as part of the process. And um, they're uh, led by a very sophisticated artist who can up the game of high school students because you know obviously they don't have as much experience. And at the same time, working with the students to make sure they're, they're, um, they're um, creating art that's really expressive of their concerns. So uh, we uh, will be uh, talking with them about possibly uh, getting involved in this project or uh, a similar organization, in other words, that can work with youth and uh, really uh, get them to be uh, an integral part of the art. So. so Monica in the chat said three, Michelle says three or four, Monica says one, Nan says two, Brianna one and five, Jane says two and five, Karen four and five. So lots of comments, that's great. And thank you Rod for that. Good. Oh, actually, I have to okay. add it in yeah, the books. It looks like, yeah. yeah, great. And Tony, okay. All right, a few more seconds through that, and we're at 7.02, which is pretty good. I know your time is valuable, and it's not often, you know, frankly, it's great that you're uh, coming out and contributing. Uh, sometimes at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do is attend another meeting. So. Uh, we're, we're glad to have you. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, close. So then um, just any last comments that you'd like to make before we close this part and summarize and wrap up? Anything about anything at all? Uh, like I said, uh, whether the Giants will win tomorrow, um, whether, uh, uh, I'm wondering if there's anything um, in terms of art or whatever, from a place of history, um, you know, if, if there's the ability to include like a, a, something in homage to whatever was existing in the area or the space before or some acknowledgement to the Ohlone people or something that um, otherwise has a historic element that can be placed. And it, it could be, you know, sculpture that gets put in later on landscaping or or otherwise in there, but just something of significance that honors its um, kind of space and history and, and something about San Jose history. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great point. Um, uh, and, and I think that is actually that's a Civic Design Studio. That's uh, one of the things that they, so those boats that I mentioned, three boats, one of them was a Chinese junk. Um, one of them was a, a Native American historical boat, and then I think one of them was a more contemporary, like a barge or, or uh, something like that. So they, in other words, were encouraging the youth to consider such themes. And um, I, I, I think it's great. I, I, the degree to which art can have a meaning that's beyond its pure visual uh, impact. Um, enriches the experience so um yeah we will we uh, will put down your your uh, suggestion and jane also second blake's comment so thank you jane and thank you blake um the other thing i want to mention because this site is kind of at the gateway leading to the city of san jose so we're really mindful of the location just to be a welcoming um location for folks who are coming from the freeway and exiting the freeway so that corner treatment is really important as we work through the design to make sure that it's a welcoming gateway basically leading to downtown San Jose as well. Um, Jane has another comment. Has the Ohlone been invited to the vision? I uh, have not, but we will definitely reach out and get some feedback as well. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. Other oh, comments? Comment. Yeah. 
um, we also have some contacts there. When we did our centennial, uh, I would imagine we're probably on the same ancestral lands as the Mwak Maloney. Uh, so yeah, Macy, feel free to hit me up. We, we just got done working with them on something else. Yes. Uh, so do Thank let you. me know. Yeah. I'll touch base with you after. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. Okay. Um... Let's move on then. Um, and we're back to our PowerPoint, I believe. I want to ask Thank quickly you for before we transition, um, any comments from Brianna, um, help staff and help you, um, not to call you out, but if you want to share any of your thoughts or Monica, et cetera, that'll be um, great. Feel free to unmute yourself. If not, we'll go back to the main session. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you could uh, open up PowerPoint again for our last few slides and okay. Um, so. Um, Kind of, we I think we've heard what's important. Well, um, we can ask. Well, I think we have asked what's important to you. But just first, in terms of the overall summary, uh, a general support of the uh, the building design. We got great input from you from for the the art and the um, um, and the color. We'll keep the green elevator core. Um, I personally am glad to. See that you voted for that. I, I liked the green, so uh, we will keep that and not change it to the gray. Um, and uh, I also liked that number one lighting fixture, which got the most votes. So I'm glad to see that as well. And um, so we will uh, move forward with those ideas. We'll be uh, trying to incorporate uh, the thoughts that you have on the art. Uh, and I think uh, asking, checking in on a white zone for a drop off uh, would be uh, would be a good idea, and the signage idea as well. We'll take we'll take all those uh, thoughts into account. So uh, great input there. Um, what's the uh, next slide is uh, next here yeah, summary and context next. So um, yeah. thank you, Rod, and thank you, HIIT, for the um, design engaging session. And thank you for all the audience for your input. Um, those are some really well thought out input, and I, we really appreciate it. And I will definitely follow them and reach out um, for additional dialogue, especially about the art um, with Blake and Tony also put something in the chat box. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so our engagement plan is a recap. We have uh, completed the listening and a vision in session in August and September. And now we're in October to design session. It seems like we get um, some really well received feedback on the design. So thank you for allowing us and HKIT team to incorporate your feedback into our design to get to where it is now. Um, and I'm really glad that you guys really like it. So from now, we're gonna have a series of ongoing one-on-one -on -one meetings with a focus group uh, youth, city, county, neighborhoods, um, and also specifically for uh, hub specific design. Um, we're going to continue our engagement meeting. So this is not the end. And if there's any additional comments, um, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Uh, next slide. Um, can I just say one more thing? Macy? Yes, of course. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I was losing steam a little bit earlier. Um, I'm just okay. trying to communicate through chat, but but I just feel that um, you know the Native Americans um, are just uh, such an important um, part of our history, okay. and um, I'm not I'm not familiar with the Mocha toy or something that Blake mentioned I, I've seen that word but I don't know how to pronounce it but I just uh, I mean I was just at the Indian Health Center today for the first time and um, I just found their services to be so respectful and just 
the opposite of, I mean, I, I mean, Kaiser's good too, but, but I mean, in a totally different way. And um, anyway, not um, just, I mean, this, you know, we've only, <laughs> Caucasians, I guess, Europeans have only been here for 500 years. And, um, you know, recently um, footsteps were found and or published about in the news in New Mexico that are 23,000 years old. So, I mean, there's, there's so much history if we listen to the Native American voice. So um, I, I just hope, you know, all over the US and North America and South America that we, we can think about them first even. And um, yeah, so uh, there's a lot of trauma that um, has not been addressed by society at large. And I know this is one housing project, but in youth space, but I think it's becoming increasingly important to the youth also um, to, um, you know, our real history so, uh, of this land. So um, I, I, I appreciate Blake you know, um, your, your attention and, and just to support that and um, just, um, the, yeah, uh, yeah, I, 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 hope, I hope that's at the forefront of all projects in Santa Clara County going forward. Thank you. Very much. I, for yeah, the it's great sharing. comment. Yeah, thank it's you. Great so much, comment, Jane. and and uh, yeah, thank you, Jane. And also, uh, I'm uh, uh, Blake's comments are great too. And I, I think uh, a good project is um, pushed on by uh, by a whole group of people. Uh, you know, good county input, good uh, client input from Macy and Allied Housing, good community input. Just you know push us to do better and to do more. Um, we, we, wanna, we want to do a good project. Yes. And I, the, the reason why we're doing our work is to really support the youth and the community at large. Um, but we also want to celebrate the youth and the context of the site and the, the history of the site. So we want to make sure we're incorporating um, the history and the context and just basically celebrate different cultures and different people within the project contacts and also sites. So we're definitely going to reach out after this meeting, engage them and incorporate any feedback on the art um, when it comes to the art pieces that will go on the building and also see um, what their opinions and thoughts are about this project. So we really appreciate um, Blake bringing that up and Jane as well. Thank you so much. Uh, any other comments before I talk about contacts information, which you can all see. Um, I want to just quickly open up the discussion, but as you can see on this uh, last slide, we have a project website, so um, parkmore-hub, and if there's any additional comments, um, we have a Google Doc that's open anytime. I check it every day, so feel free to uh, send us a comment, and I'll um, receive that and read that and uh, share that with our project team. I'll put that in the chat box as well. Um, for any ongoing uh, future meetings, just reach out to me anytime. Um, so we're accessible completely and we want to hear from you on an ongoing basis. Um, for any project design specific meetings, please um, share that with us in the next um, few weeks. So we're going to be submitting for entitlement. You know, this week incorporating everyone's feedback. So make sure you get those in so HDIT can uh, include those. So I'm going to put these in the chat box um, so you can have have a direct link and you don't have to copy it down. And then in the meantime, I will be um, opening the discussion up right now. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself and share your thoughts. Um, okay. Are there any additional comments? 
your thoughts and how do you guys feel about this project or last minute opinion? Just thank you for being so intentional. I don't know that I've ever been so included in something <laughs> as as uh, even like we're, we're getting work done on my own house right now. So we're doing some like remodeling. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know that everyone's going to sat down and you you all do a fantastic job of it. And I'm not I'm not just saying that to gas you up. I, I really appreciate that as as feeling like, you know, this building is going to be part of our neighborhood. Um, and part of our community, it, it's very cool to, you know, uh, invite the neighbors in on this. So um, point definitely well taken. And I've been carrying that up at our um, management meetings here at the college. So thank you. That's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, have, I have a comment, Mr. Robert. Robert. Thank you, Blake. We will oh. um, touch base and thank you for San Jose City College um, support and you guys are neighbors right next to the site. So we're really excited to be neighbors to you. So I will touch base about um, what we have it about. So hi, Robert, you're unmuting yourself and saying something? Yes, um, oh wait, did I, I mean, yeah, I did. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, this is the first project I have seen to which I can just pretty much say, yes, do it. Oh. <laughs> uh, and, and after having so much of the uh, development within the Buena Vista area, they come into our area and they said, oh, yeah, we're going to build you something fabulous and it's going to look great. And, it, and of course, it never turns out that way. And it's always a compromise. And so it's really nice to see you outreaching to the community and coming up with a lovely design and, you know, lovely colors. And I think it's going to be great. So um, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Thank you so much, Robert. Your opinion and your neighborhood's opinion right across the street is extremely important to us because you'll see it every single day. So I really appreciate your comments. And we're really glad to have your feedback and incorporate in the design. So thank you so much. Other comments or thoughts? Michelle, so thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Jane. And thank you, Destination Home. Any other comments? from the audience. Karen, Tony, I don't want to call them people, but I recognize everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, this, this is a beautiful project. I, I mean, I, I see thousands of them. This, this would be iconic for that area. And I think it really blends well. I'd love to see the students input or the youth's input on, on the artwork around the hub, especially. I think that can be a real neat statement there. Thank you, Tony. And welcome Rob's cat that just joined us. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's, <laughs> she's joining in the community meeting, but I uh, can't get her to comment yet. Maybe okay. later. <laughs> she can unmute uh, herself. <laughs> um, this is Lois uh, from Allied Housing Boat Services. And I, I just wanted to uh, thank everyone who's participated in this process. Uh, so often we don't get to the point where we're actually um, able to incorporate ideas um, because of frustrations within neighborhoods uh, about uh, what has been done there already and the feelings about uh, where neighborhoods are going and so forth, all understandable. And, and the level of frustration is so high that we don't get to a place where we can talk about making something we're all proud of. And I, I just really want to appreciate as someone's been doing this for a long time, I just want to appreciate every, everyone who's participated in providing really meaningful um, feedback and, and helping make this uh, the, the sort of project we're moving towards. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. We appreciate your comment as well. Uh, I want to read out Monica from um, The Hub. Um, thank you. And Ingrid Destination Home and uh, David from Supervisor Ellenberg's office. Also, thank you very much for um, your attendance and also feedback as well. Other folks, <laughs> Maricela, critical folks, um, Brianna, any other last minute comments? If not, I'm gonna let um, Natalie and Andrew wrap up this meeting um, and share um, just a final thought on the county side. Anything you want to add to this, Natalie and Andrew? Uh, I just want to say a quick thank you to all of you for attending and participating. I think this has just been an amazing process, and I think it's going to be a fantastic project. 
And I think it's in part to all of the great feedback that we've gotten from everyone. So, so thank you for that. Thank you, Natalie. Andrew? The same. Thanks, Natalie, for articulating that. Uh, my, my feelings are the same. Thank you. Well, the county has been a wonderful partner. So have the youth and the hub and all the community members. So you'll hear from us again. This won't be the last. <laughs> um, and reach out anytime. With that said, I want to thank you everyone for your time. Um, and I'll let you guys enjoy your night and resting. And I uh, hope you have a good upcoming weekend. Good night, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.